If you've been around the channel, you'll notice that I love pushing video games to the absolute limits of what they can handle. In fact, I have a whole series dedicated to doing just that in Pikmin 3. Well, I did. So when I finally got my hands on Pikmin 4, you know the first thing I did was try to bust it wide open. But something surprised me. This game is well optimized. Like really well optimized. It is by far the most technically polished game Nintendo has ever made. When I fought every boss at once for a video a few months back, the game didn't even stutter. Not one single frame drop. Now compare that to Pikmin 3, where the game would crash if you even looked at it funny. What's happening? So of course I took this as a challenge and decided that today, we will crash Pikmin 4. This video will not end until we break the unbreakable Pikmin game. Now first, let's set some ground rules. Our goal is to crash the game, but we obviously could very easily cheat that if we wanted to. Like, we could easily just add a cracked pot object to spawn something it can't spawn, like a giant Empress Bulblax or something. Then yeah, it would probably crash. But no, we aren't taking any shortcuts. The purpose of this video is to find out Pikmin 4's technical limit. How much stress can it take before it buckles? Well, let's find out. But first, consider subscribing to the channel, because at 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a video where I do absolutely nothing. So subscribe and leave your amazing ideas below. All right, back to the video. The first thing I did was boot up Serene Shores and remove every enemy and object. It may seem weird, but you'll see exactly why in a second. I decided to test the waters by adding 50 Jumbo Bulb Orbs. I didn't expect this to do anything crazy, but, I mean, we gotta start somewhere. And yeah, the game had no problem at all rendering them. So I doubled the enemies from 50 to 100. I booted it up and... What? It's getting a bit hard to move around, but the game still isn't budging an inch. I'm sure you get the idea. The plan is to keep doubling the amount of enemies until the game gives in and walks into the light. When I did this for Pikmin 3, the limit was around 400 enemies before the game brutally crashed. I kept on going expecting something similar here. First I did 200, then 400, then 800. This is already double what Pikmin 3 was able to handle, and yet it shows no signs of slowing down. This is already incredibly impressive, but still not what we're looking for. Let's try gathering a bunch of them in one place. Okay, this is a good sign. The game is starting to lag a bit. One more round of this and we may get our crash. It's time for 1600 enemies. That's a lot of bulb orbs. It looks strange and uh, scary, but this is actually the game acting as intended. Whenever an enemy or object is far away, its animations completely stop in order to save on resources. I'm sure you've noticed this in game a few times. It's mostly noticeable on the grub chuckers, but it starts acting normal when we get close enough. Not only did the game not crash, but it's actually running pretty well. Well, sorta but a lot better than I expected. This is insanely impressive from an optimization standpoint, but I was positive the game would not survive another round of this. But Nintendo seemed to think so too, because the game doesn't even try to go any further. Somewhere around 2,000 enemies, it just stops listening to you. But why exactly? You'll never reach anywhere near this number naturally. It became very clear that this method was not going to work, but that's okay. We have more tricks up our sleeve. Okay, so the last method was a bust. Who cares? We have plenty more ideas. Some of you guys may remember my mom from a while back, Thickman 4, where I made every enemy bigger and more threatening. A question I got asked a lot was, exactly how big can I make an enemy? Well, let's find out. 
I decided our guinea pig for this experiment was going to be none other than the smoky prog, because it doesn't have that animation cutoff limit that I mentioned earlier. Because trust me, we're going to need to keep our distance from this guy. I also made sure to evacuate every other enemy, just to keep the collateral damage to a minimum. So in case you haven't picked up on it yet, kind of like last time, we're going to be increasing the smoky prog's size and fighting it, just to see how the game reacts. All right, let's set it up. First thing to test was double size, which I didn't expect to be a big deal. And yeah, it wasn't. Everything seemed to look completely normal. He may be twice as big, but it's still Pikmin 4, so he's not an issue. Next, I increased it to three times its normal size. Maybe now it will actually put up a fight. Next up, I increased it to five times its normal size. At 10 times normal size, we're slowly approaching the realm of it being unplayably large, but the game is still running with no issues. As usual, I underestimated the limits of Pikmin 4. It's time to get serious. Yeah, that's big. Even at this massive size, you can still kill it with the impact damage from the purple Pikmin. Because, well, you can keep going bigger, but this is starting to look like another dead end. But before I abandon this idea, I know what a lot of you are thinking. Don't worry, I'm thinking it too. Let's take the Bullboard party from last time and increase their size as well. Oh, that's not what you were thinking? Well, we're gonna do it anyway. So I took this idea and merged it with the last one to in over 1,600 extra-large jumbo bulb orbs, just to see what would happen. Nope. Game's still going. I didn't want to have to do this. But Nintendo has backed me into a corner here. I am going to make this game crash. And if I have to commit a few war crimes along the way, so be it. We are done joking around. Introducing the Nuke Rock. With the combined force of over 300 bomb rocks, no game in existence can survive the onslaught of particle effects that the Nuke Rock creates. Rendering explosions is usually very hard on a game, and we are going to cause over 300 of them at once. I didn't want it to come to this, but this is the only way. Without further ado, let's detonate it. But first, a word from this video's sponsor. Yeah, they thought of that too. In case you didn't catch what happened, when the game got overloaded with particle effects, New ones wouldn't play until the older ones finished. In order to prevent the game from doing exactly what we were trying to do. That's why the explosion animation kept playing long after the bombs were gone. We could do a million bombs and it would make no difference. At all. I hate to say it. This game might just be too well made. We tried three different methods that would crash any other game in a heartbeat. But not this one. They put way more care into polishing this game than usual. I would expect this level of optimization from a game with a stage builder or something. Or maybe they were just focused on making extremely solid groundwork for future Pikmin games. But regardless, 
I promised you guys a crash, and we still have one last method that we talked about earlier. Like, we could easily just set a cracked pot object to spawn something it can't spawn, like a giant Empress Bulblax or something. Then yeah, it would probably crash. I'm not proud of it. But a crash is a crash. I won't let Nintendo win. Not today. Let's do it. What the f-